All right, guys, we are back for round two. Feels like I've been waiting forever, considering uh, this round went to basically 15 minutes and we took not that much time winning. So let's hope this round goes just as easily. Um, I think this is probably a keep just because we can tutor for our obliterator and then slam a sword on it. And plus, whatever we draw is going to... Um, we're going to be able to play, so... Even though it seems like a bit of an awkward hand, I think we do keep it just on the power of Obliterator. Although if he has counter spells, that could be bad. Is he going to force spike us? No. Okay. So, the question is, do we just want to get Obliterator here? We could also get Liliana of the Veil, vale, Bitter Blossom. Um, Blossom might be pretty good with our sword here, but, hmm, yeah, given that he's blue, I think I just want to get Bitter Blossom, actually. I mean, he could counter that anyway. I think, I think I want, I think I want the Blossom, though. We can play that next turn. Yeah, so he looks like to be pretty close to mono blue. I mean, you never know, but we'll play out the blossom. Hope he doesn't counter it. Yeah, he's going to counter it. That's fine. So this isn't a great hand um, that we kept against a blue deck with counter spells, but I think it was probably correct in the blind. Let's Inquisition him, see what he has going on. Hopefully we draw a creature to equip to our sword and maybe just get him. He's going to counter this. Okay, Ancestral Recall. That's a powerful one. Okay, so... Looks to be blue-white control. I don't have to write down Journey. Um, so we've got Elspeth... Factor Fiction, Blue, didn't spell that right, um, White, Sower, and Venser. So if we draw, um, if we draw a creature that we can immediately equip the sword to, he's not going to be able to deal with it. Or I guess he will be able to with Parallax Wave. Um, but if he doesn't draw another white source, he won't be able to deal with it. I'm assuming he's playing his white here. Ponder. Okay, he drew that. Yeah, um, our hand doesn't really match up that well against his hand right now. We kind of kept a, we kept a bad one in terms of the matchup. So hopefully we'll be able to keep better ones now that we know what, what kind of deck he's on. If he was like any random creature deck, the obliterator would have just gotten him, but well, we have another sword, so that's a thing. If we draw one drop, we can just like equip both. Although this doesn't give pro-white, does it? No, so he's going to be able to Parallax Wave whatever we put the swords on, unfortunately. The one color that we don't have protection from. I don't think we have very high chances of winning this game, although we do get to him him here, so that's good. I can take these out. He's going to fact in response. Yeah, makes sense. Um, let's see. Does he have anything to put on the Isochron? Not that we know of. So I think I'm okay with giving him that. I probably want to go like this. I mean, I really don't want him to get a white source. It might just be lands and both. Yeah, I think, I think it has to be that. I mean, he really does want lands with this hand, especially the planes, so it would be better to give him no spells. I think he's actually going to take the lands, just because he needs one of them. No, he took Isochron and Jace. Okay. So he might have something good to put uh, the Isochron on, but we're going to have to be cool with that. And then what did he discard? He discarded Parallax Wave and Elspeth. Okay, so we can take those off. And he's got Sower, Venser, Iso, and Jace, and two unknowns. We'll play land and pass. 
really we don't have very many interesting decisions this game. We just kind of have to hope that we draw, play a creature, equip swords, and maybe get there. It's probably a Venser. Isochron with a counter spell probably means we're dead. But maybe we can overload it in one turn. Yeah, okay, so that's bad. Um, we're basically dead here, but we have to like stockpile creatures in our hand. Swords don't do much if you don't have any creatures, which is a little bit of an issue with our deck. I mean, we don't have that many creatures, but they're still powerful enough to play and try to take advantage of. We could board in Bloodsoak Champion against him just to get aggressive. He's got a Fencer. Hope he blinks his Isochron. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, just got to pass. No point in conceding, though. Got to make him kill us. Jace is probably, you know, a good enough win condition when he has this. I was thinking for a second that he might have tapped out of the Isochron, but he didn't. So we knew about those two guys, now we just know about his sower. Um, skin render, huh? Yep, we just gotta play land and pass here. It's not even a May, so we'd have to kill our own skin render. Even if he didn't counter it. We basically can't play spells for the rest of this game. This is like a rev frost titan. Okay. His kill condition of choice, I guess. Library. This deck's pretty good. Hopefully we can just be disruptive in the early game. That should be the goal. Okay, let's uh, go for the mom. Just gonna put that on top, sure. And then we get to resolve our skin render. I think I just want to equip sword to him. So I don't want to pay two for the Frost Titan trigger. Hopefully he doesn't vent our ultimate. I mean, yeah. We're, we're dead here. We just have to assume our opponent misplays a bunch. He's got the emblem, and he just needs any spell. He does only have 11 cards left, so that's a thing. He's going to image the Frost Titan, I'm guessing. Kill the sword, tap the render, hit us for 6. Next turn, hit us for 12. He's got this game pretty solidly locked up. on our other planes. Yep, yep. We're drawing the mom. Just run him out of a little bit of clock here. No reason not to. Don't really think we have anything to sideboard for this matchup. I mean, we could bring in the Blood Soaked. Not sure what we would take out. 
Maybe like a go for the throat. Is at the point where he's casting Frost Titan, we're probably dead anyway. At least we were this game. Not really much commentary to give here, we're just dying but letting him use up some clock. I think we definitely have a chance in this matchup though, as long as we don't keep hands like the one we kept this game. I still think it was correct, although it is, you know, a pretty speculative one. Um, but yeah, like I, I think it was correct in the abstract because if we were facing any deck other than like a blue deck, um, those decks have a really tough time dealing with Obliterator. And we die. If he just clicks yes. Okay. So let's see what we have here to board in. Doesn't look like much. Um, are there any cards that are bad enough that we would want blood soaked over them? Probably go for the throat. Nizumi Shortfang seems good in this matchup. Or Bone Shredder. Yeah, let's take out Bone Shredder, leaving the go for the throat. And we basically just don't have a sideboard other than that, so. I'll submit. The Abyss isn't good enough, I don't think. He can mill us with JC even if we kill all his win conditions. I will play first. And... I think this has to be a mulligan. It's just not going to do anything against his deck. Go for the Throat is the worst card in our deck. This is not much better. We have to mulligan here. And I guess this is a keep. Hopefully we can get there. Inquisition, that's a start. We do want to start drawing some lands pretty soon, but I guess we can take out a counter spell of his. Okay, leak, balance, balance is good, we might need to take that. Wastes, frosty, blue, blue, white. Um, so the question is whether we want to take balance or mana leak. I think we have to take balance, let him leak something. Balance is just too powerful of a card. Um, he can just like kill all of our creatures and then play Frost Titan. Although, you know what, I actually take Mana Leak, I think, because we are so much farther behind on resources. Yeah, I think I actually have to take Leak and just accept that he might get us on a really big balance. We have to keep in mind at all points that he has balance, but um, hopefully this line will work out for us. It's a good start. We just want to keep drawing our swamps. Next turn we can slam Batter Skull. Batter Skull doesn't die to balance, only the germ token does, so that's good. Isochron on balance? That is going to be tough to beat. On memory, okay. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be a tough game to, to come back from. But we'll do our best. I mean, there's really nothing we can do against this. Just have to hope he taps out, which he pretty clearly is not planning on doing anytime soon. Oh well, I mean, sometimes you lose to stuff like this, you just have to accept it. This does make him use a significant amount of time, though. But he's got plenty of time since he won game one. He can't really tap out ever, or I mean, I guess he can, but he's taking a big risk. What's this? Composite research, sure. Maybe he just mills himself? If I'm getting hopeful. Just open up the yards here. Take a look at what he discards. He does need a lot of lands this game, so 
He might not want to discard one if he's a little bit low in hand, but I think he will just end up discarding one anyway. Really, he needs to get to eight mana to uh, here. Um, that's the thing. We can't really play that, can we? I mean, I guess we could threaten to resolve a creature with it, and he probably won't memory lapse. But if he does, it's really bad for us. It just makes it totally transparent. The question is, is it worth it to resolve the sword? I think it is, because after we've been thinking about it for a little bit, he probably knows that we have a creature. I mean, he might just fire it off anyway. But yeah, see, he has to let us resolve that. So I guess we get to sneak that under, although it's not a huge deal if we can't resolve a creature ever. Chase Blaren, sure. That's probably going to mill us. Obliterator, huh? Um, I mean, yeah, there's nothing we can do. We just have ex uh, spells that are too expensive to really be resolving through the Isochron Scepter. He's going to draw a card. That's fine. We basically just need a ton of lands or more cheaper spells, and then we can just equip swords. This is basically going the exact same way as last game, but there was nothing really we could do to stop it. I mean, we inquisitioned him, but we didn't see either of these. He drew them consecutively. He still has balance in hand, too. He doesn't only have 17 cards in the library. Okay, so we've got 6, 7 mana. Still nothing we can do with that. I wonder what he's going to do with his Jace this turn. Image the Drifter. Okay. So there's a chance he just decks out here. We have to be hopeful at least. He's not doing anything with the Jace, so clearly he's aware of the decking problem. Black Lotus, that gives us enough opportunity to try to resolve something. I mean, I'm sure he has another counter spell, but we have to go for it. So what do we want to resolve? We have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. So basically we are going with um, either Grave Titan and, and Obliterator or Batter Skull and Obliterator. And the question is, which one do we want to resolve, if we can, any? Um, I think I want to resolve... It's probably Gravy Train, so I'm going to start off with the Batter Skull. Wait, that doesn't work. I'm going to start off with the Obliterator. And if he doesn't counter this, we get to equip both swords, so he pretty much has to, and then we get to resolve Grave Titan. Okay. happens. Then we crack this and hopefully resolve this big boy. I'm assuming he has a counter spell. I mean, he's done so much digging, but we had to go for it. Yeah, mana drain. Okay, so we are pretty definitively dead here. He can play Frost Titan, lock down our planes. Maybe we just have to hope he, like, F6s, I guess? You, you always try to think of ways to win. So I hope he, like, F6s and we get to play Batter Skull. That's our plan, I think. Not much of one, but it is a plan, technically speaking. Elspeth, sure. And he's going to hit us, yeah. Sorry, guys, this wasn't really a very interesting round, but... I honestly think we made the, made the right decisions. The hand in game one was not um, not ideal, I think, to keep, but I'm not necessarily sure that it was wrong. I mean, I've talked plenty about that, so you guys don't need to hear more of it. Um, let's go with the Obliterator, see if he counters it. Basically, just have to jam stuff at this point. 
we can't wait to draw like a smaller creature and then overload the memory lapse because we're just under too much pressure. We just have to hope that he accidentally F6. Maybe he accidentally casts balance and still beats us with his planeswalkers. Yeah, there are not many ways for us to win. He basically has to draw a bunch of cards by accident. We're dead next turn. I mean, never concede. Like, there's no reason to. But. Excited Mall Drifter. Okay, that's a start. Maybe he just goes for a big rev end of turn and kills himself. I would appreciate that. Rar, jam it again. What a shocking surprise. Uh, we're going to yield here. Memory Lapse and Icecron Scepter is a combo. I will give it that. It is, technically speaking, a combo. As in, it is a combination of cards that beat us. Okay. Um, I will see you guys in round three.